Good afternoon, class. Today is June the 10th, day 45 of Corona Chem for grade 12, you and the AP. Your mock test had four questions, 21, 31, 43, and 68. Let's see how far we get into it. So, question 51. The first question is, at 1000 Kelvin, Kp equals 1.85 for the reaction of SO2 gas plus 1 half O2 gas, giving you SO3 gas. A. What is the value of Kp for the reaction reversed? Uh, when you reverse the reaction, you take the reciprocal of the Kp value. So 1 over Kp is 1 over 1.85. You get 0 0.5405, rounds off to 0 0.54. Part B of the same question. What is the value of Kp for the reaction to SO3? So basically twice the original reaction. If you double the reaction, you square the value of Kp. So you can depict that uh, Kp is equal to SO3 squared over SO2 squared times concentration of O2. You see that for the undoubled reaction, for the regular reaction, it's all raised to the power of 1. And this one's raised to the power of 1 half. So it basically doubles all the exponents, and it doubles the exponent of the value of Kp. So here it's 1, here it becomes 2, so 1.85 squared give you 3.42 after the sig figs. The rules for all this is on page 640 of the text, if you want to refresh your memory. Part C. Uh, calculate Kp for, no, sorry, uh, what is the value of Kc for the reaction in part B? So Kc is related to Kp by Rt to the delta n, where delta n is the change in the number of moles of participating substances. So everything is participating in this because it's a um, homogeneous reaction. Everything is in the gas phase. So you have two moles, uh, three moles of gas total turning into two moles of gas. So product minus reactants, two minus three gives you a negative one. So this number is to the power of negative one. So Kp equals Kc, or the R is 0.082057, because you did it in atmospheres. Uh, and you have 1,000 Kelvin for the temperature. Don't forget to put it at the absolute temperature, and you get 281 after sig figs. That's the first one. Now let's do 31. Question asks a mixture of 0.1 mole of nitrogen monoxide and 0.05 mole of hydrogen gas and 0.1 mole of H2O is placed in a 1 liter vessel at 300 Kelvin. The following equilibrium is established. It shows you the reaction. Uh, at equilibrium, the nitrogen monoxide concentration is 0.062. A. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of hydrogen, nitrogen, and water. B. Calculate the value of Kc. This is a case for the ice table. Here's the reaction original. If you find this stuff easy, just fast forward to it. Don't sit there and be bored because uh, then you're going to get less studying done. If you already understand it, don't bother look what don't bother watching stuff you already understand. So what did we already know from this reaction? 1531. They told you all the initial conditions and then they told you at equilibrium NO is 0.062. So this is what I had as my given information. But from that, I can construct what happened everywhere else. How did I get from here to here? Well, I lost 0 0.308, 0 0.038. So if I lost 0 0.038 here, 
I asked it also over here because it's a two to two stoichiometry. So this is going to be 0 0.038 and it's going to end up with 0 0.012. This one is going to gain half as much as 0 0.038 because the stoichiometry here is two to one. So it's going to be plus 0 0.038 over two, which gives you 0 0.019. And this one is going to gain the same amount because it's a two to two stoichiometry. So this is point plus 0 0.038. This one ends up being 0.138. So to find the value of Kp, let's put in all those, sorry, the value of Kc, let's put in all those concentrations. Are they concentrations? Moles, yeah, they're moles. And it's a one liter container, so it's moles per liter. Yeah, they're all concentrated. So Kc is equal to the N2 concentration times the H2O concentration to the power of 2 over uh, NO2 concentration to the power of 2 times H2 concentration to the power of 2. You get all these powers from looking at the appropriate um, coefficients. What that works out to is 0.019 raised to the power of 1, 0 0.138 to the power of 2 over 0 0.06 2 to the power of 2 and 0.012 to the power of 2, which gives you uh, 3.6136 times 10 to the power of negative 4 over 5.53536 times 10 to the power of negative 7, and that gives you 653.68102. And you're only allowed strictly speaking a two some of them have two, some of them have no, they're all two sig figs actually. So you're only allowed really two sig figs. So you can only really say six hundred and fifty as the value of KC. Then to find KP. Oh they don't ask that. No, okay, then we don't have to worry about it. Next one, 43. Yeah, just a good tip is to always read the question. I, I sometimes fall into that. I get excited about solving it, and then I don't, I don't actually read what the question is asking me to do, and I end up giving answers that it's not asking for, or it's completely not giving the answer it was asking for. some unnecessary work here. Let's see, 43. Um, at 2,000 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium constant for the reaction to nitrogen monoxide gas turning into nitrogen gas plus O2 gas, it's a homogeneous equilibrium, everything is included, is Kc equals 2.4 times 10 to the 3. If the initial concentration of NO is 0.2 molar, what are the equilibrium concentrations of nitrogen monoxide, nitrogen, and oxygen? So. This is also an ice table problem. It can be helped by laying everything out. I recommend very strongly that even if you don't know how to solve it, set it up an ice table because I give marks just for that part because you're on the way to solving. And sometimes, you know, when you start writing the information down, at first you don't know what you're doing, but then all of a sudden we see it all laid out it starts to make sense to you. So get into the habit of laying out the information that the um, uh, that the, um, the problem is giving you. So we know that uh, okay, the ice table what do we know initially? We know that we have 0.2 of this. This is all zero. We know that a certain amount of it is going to react. But let's establish X as the amount of nitrogen that's produced at equilibrium. 
So some amount X of nitrogen is going to appear, which means also a certain, the same amount of oxygen is going to appear, which means 2X of nitrogen monoxide is going to disappear. So at equilibrium, you're going to have 0.2 minus 2X, so I should say let X equal N2 of that forms. Okay, so that way we can, it's always important to, to find your variable. And then you get X and X at equilibrium. So we all know that the KC has to equal 2.4 times 10 to the power of 3, and that it is based on concentration of products over concentration of reactants. In this case, we have to square the concentration of the reactants. What we're going to get is X squared over 0.200 minus 2x all squared, which results in a trinomial. What you're going to get is, I'm going to spare you the details of how I, I get the trinomial, but I just cross multiplied and then I, so I got one line and then I simplified and I set it all to one side so it equals to zero. What you get at the end is 9,599x squared minus 1,920x plus 96 equals zero. I did it on my notebook using the quadratic formula, which is this, in case you don't forget, uh, remember, x equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. But your calculator can just as easily do it. So I'm gonna double check my results using the calculator. Clear that. A is 9,599, enter. B is negative 1,920, enter. And C is 96. Yeah. And enter, we get 0 0.101, 031145, and 0 0 0.09898969072. Two answers are possible, so plug them into the equilibrium expression to obtain the real one. Well, how do we distinguish the real one? That is the question. You can't have twice this constant. Okay, I'll give, you the, I'll give you the two answers and I'll show you why one of them is impossible. So you get two answers from your quadratic formula. You get 0 0.101, 0, 0311145 as one possibility. The other possibility is 0 0.0989. Um, uh, this one is impossible because if you subtract 2 times this from 0.2, you get a number below 0. So you, this cannot be a possibility. It's got to be this one. So let, let's write down the final answers as a result of that conclusion. Um, so for the first one, the NO concentration is going to be equal to 0 0.2 minus the 2x, which is equal to 0 0.2 minus uh, twice 0 0.0989, etc., which gives you uh, 2.0 times 10 to the minus 3. Essentially, after you do your sig figs, you get almost no change in the, in the value for if you don't have two sig figs. And your N2 and O2 concentrations are going to be equal, and they come out to this number. So uh, you have to write the two sig figs, so you're going to say 0 0.099 molar. That one is solved. There's no additional parts on that one. 43. And the last question is 68. It says nitric oxide reacts readily with chlorine gas as follows. It gives you the equation 2 nitrogen monoxide gas reacts with chlorine gas to give you 
NOCL gas and at 700 Kelvin the equilibrium constant Kp for this reaction is 0.26 predict the behavior of each of the following mixtures as this at this temperature when a PaNO equals 0.1 and it gives you a bunch of different conditions there's an ABC part so what, what, what they're doing here is getting you to uh, calculate a reaction quotient Q and then predict whether the reaction moves left or right. I think we may have done this one already or something, someone like it. Reaction goes like this: two NO gas plus Cl2 gas yields uh, two NOCl. I don't know how to call that gas at 700 Kelvin. So the reaction quotient is going to be given by uh, the NOCl concentration raised to the power of two over two times the nitrogen monoxide. Sorry, the nitrogen monoxide concentration raised to the power of 2 times the chlorine gas concentration to the power of 1. And all of that, in this case, in part A, we have 0.11 squared over 0.15 squared times point. Oh, actually, it doesn't make a difference in this case, but uh, what you get is Q equals 1.734. Uh, Kp in this reaction happens to be 0.26, so that means Q is bigger than Kp, which means the reaction, uh, I concluded that therefore the numerator must get smaller and the denominator must get larger to come closer to equilibrium, so the reaction is going to move left. Therefore, reaction moves left to make the numerator smaller and denominator bigger as it approaches equilibrium. Part B of the same question, uh, you get Q equals 0 0.050 squared over 0 0.12 squared times 0 0.1 and that gives you 1.7361 recurring. Uh, Q is bigger than uh, Kp. I put the wrong answer here. Q is bigger than Kp, so the reaction has to move to the, no I didn't, it's still there, it moves left, it moves left, okay, because it's going to make the numerator smaller, so it's going to go produce more uh, re uh, reactants. And then for C, you've got Q equal to 5.1 times 10 to the negative 3 squared over 0 0.15 squared times 0 0.2, which gives you a value of Q of 5.78 times 10 to the negative 3. Q is quite a lot smaller than Kp, therefore it's going to move right to achieve equilibrium. And there you go. That would have been four questions, all achievable within a reasonable time frame, but a typical class. I'm going to let you study that tonight. Tomorrow morning I will post your mock test questions and then you will have until 6 o'clock that evening to do it, okay? And we'll see you tomorrow.